about those who can. Now, can you or can you not? No, you just want to sit on the sideline and talk about other people, or can you step up? What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally, literally does not work. Shout out to all of you great fans out there. We are closing in on 100,000. 100,000 subscribers. We're about 2,000. 286 away from getting there i am completely humbled and i can't believe it um law nation said we need to do some kind of a party or something um i think when we do hit that mark we, we maybe we'll live stream all day all day and, and maybe the cowboys will actually have signed a free agent so we can pop the bottle that's what we'll do we'll pop the bottle here and we'll have a party um for the dallas cowboys the Dallas Cowboys are one of two teams winning, winning by not signing an outside free agent thus far in free agency. Maybe the Cowboys are crazy like a fox. Maybe, just maybe, they are just waiting. And I, I posed this last night and I said, maybe the Cowboys were smart not to sign the big name free agents early. Okay. That you let the dust clear, you let the, you know, I'm trying to be optimistic here. I'm trying to be optimistic here because many times we've seen the commanders, you know, formerly the Redskins, that were always the off-season champions. They'd go out, they'd sign the Albert Hainsworth, and they're like, oh my God, Washington has a great defense already. They put in Albert Hainsworth. Now people are going to be scared. How are you going to stop them? Remember how last year when the Eagles were doing all of these big moves and so on and uh, the draft, Philly 500 started sending me pictures of, of uh, Jordan Davis and Jalen Carter and all of his secondary and everything else and talking about how good they're going to be. He, I mean, seriously, he kept just sending picture after picture to rub it in my face. How'd that work out for the Eagles? How'd that work out? I believe the Cowboys, who did nothing, nothing, ended up winning the division. Now, we sucked it up against the Green Bay Packers, but at least my quarterback is 32-8 and eight in the division. That's a start, okay? So, like clockwork, my boy, Philly 500, started doing the same damn thing last night. Yes, he's sending me pictures of Saquon Barkley and Eagles gear and all this, that, and the other. And he is, you know, excited. So he's rubbing it in my face. And I told him, karma is a mother humper. And I'm hoping that this ends up jinxing his ass again. That this literally blows up in their face. How many times have we seen, like when Buffalo signed um, Von Miller, and we were sitting there like, oh, my God, you know, Von Miller wanted to come here and, you know, and everything else, right? He goes to Buffalo, and he's been an albatross wrapped around their neck. I think that's the term. I may be wrong. But he's like, okay, I'll tell you what. He's like some chains wrapped around his neck in a Sopranos episode, and he's going to go sleep with the fishies, okay? That's literally how bad it's been with the Von Miller contract. And we've seen some big name free agents signed by teams that have gone all in like, you know, Denver getting Russell Wilson. That two years later, they've got to jettison that person because it just didn't work out. And as crazy as this sounds, we have killed the Dallas Cowboys organization over and over again, every off season during free agency. And literally have said, the Cowboys don't care about winning. But somehow, they at least win 12 games. And the teams that went out there and ended up getting all these players and everything else, they're not going any further than we are. You can look at Buffalo that, that has gone through and been a big player in free agency. The only thing they have to show for it is one AFC championship game. They didn't go to the Super Bowl. And now, they've gutted the roster. They've had to gut the roster. One of the few ones that you can say that it hadn't wrecked them would be, say, the Cleveland Browns. I still don't know how they have cap room 
with the $63 million hit that they've got from Deshaun Watson, but it hasn't precluded them from being a playoff team as well, although they haven't gone any further than us. But we don't have room to talk about them not going far in the playoffs since we don't. So maybe we just need to cool our jets a little bit. Now, we're seeing NFL Network is talking about A.J. Dillon. A.J. Dillon, running back from the Green Bay Packers, uh, 25 years old from New London, Connecticut, you know, went to Boston College, that there may be interest there in him signing with the Dallas Cowboys. Now, the thing with A.J. Dillon, he's been kind of, you know, spending, splitting time uh, in the backfield. Um, last year was kind of a down year. He had 613 yards, 3.4 yard average on 178 carries. Uh, the year before, 4.1. The year before that, 4.3. The year before that, uh, 5.3. Um, at least he's breathing. And he is designated a running back. So that is a start. Now the Cowboys budget, and here's what the Cowboys are looking at and saying, listen, we don't want to overpay for a running back. They're still in that model of running backs now are Posada non grata. Um, although teams are looking and saying, maybe we were too quick to say running backs don't matter because everybody grabbed up and there was a big run on it. However, the Cowboys are saying, we got $3.5 million here that we'll spend on a running back. We'll draft another guy. We'll be good. Now, I would like to see where the Cowboys are looking to spend money on other positions. Do they turn around and have more money scheduled for linebacker? Do they have more money scheduled for, say, offensive line? Because that may be the case. Now, if they want to get money, don't, don't let it fool you. Don't let them fool you to think that they can't do things that they want to. They can get easily $63 million without even doing Dak Prescott's contract. And I think right now what we're getting is the Cowboys trying to maneuver and get a better deal on Dak Prescott. I don't want to say all the things that I feel completely here. I don't want to burn any bridges. But the Cowboys are working on trying to make Dak Prescott's agent, Todd France, come up off of it a bit. And get that deal. Um, in the grand scheme of things, you're being fed that that contract is going to destroy their team. That there's no way in the world that you can pay a quarterback that much money and still have a team. That's not the truth in today's NFL. Not with the way the salary cap is growing um, out there. The salary cap within the next couple of years, well, probably within two years, will be over $300 million. And as you're seeing now, um, other positions that are now in the $30 million range and seeing that journeyman quarterbacks are now getting 30 plus million, that the cost of doing business at quarterback is going to grow. 60 million this year is really 53 million last year or 45 the year before. Percentage wise is what we're talking about here. And you have to understand that the NFL is a growing business that will make more money. So let's go to, of course, as always, Get Up. Now, here's a funny thing this morning. Listen to Get Up this morning. And I, I don't know if this was just a clip that I got or something. But I swear it sounds like there's a fart in here. Okay? So I haven't gotten this from from uh, ESPN and because this is probably a pirated um video where somebody has copied it so it's possible <laughs> because i asked it's possible that they had the sound in the background here but it sounds like mike greenberg farted let's go to the tape well i asked him to get me some stats because i asked lewis a question this morning as, as, as again if someday if i uh, am lucky enough to own an nfl team lewis is going to be my general manager and I said, mm -hmm. the teams that win this first day, like the first day of free agency is so splashy, right? right. I mean, everyone, made, all these big, big splashy signings, does it actually correlate to winning in the regular season? And the answer is, yes, it does. Hmm. Over, if you look the, over the you, last 10 off seasons, to the that. season, and the answer is, yes, it does. Hmm. Over, if you look over the last 10 off seasons, did, did you does guys it hear actually it? correlate to winning in the regular season and the answer is yes it does hmm. over if you look over the last 10 off seasons the teams that were the top three spenders 
averaged two more wins in the following year. The teams that were the bottom three spenders averaged one and a half fewer wins the following year. So it has made a sig those are significant. Okay, so here's what's interesting. The Cowboys make no moves, and they have the same amount of wins every year. Right? They didn't spend more. They didn't spend less. They didn't spend anything, and they've had the same record three years in a row. So there you have that. Figure numbers, to be clear. So it has made a big difference, Lewis. So when I, with that as the context, how big a deal should people be making of the fact that the Cowboys are basically standing pat and losing people? Well, look, when, when, when you ask me this question, look, I, I understand how in the recent past, in the past decade, that it has correlated to wins. Unfortunately, I've been a part of organizations where we were big spenders in the first 48 hours and it amounted to nothing. There I mean, absolutely nothing. As a matter of fact, it amounted to turmoil. So, look, I, I think with Dallas, you have, to take, you have to understand that, look, this is a long off season, And I think a lot, of, a lot of the things, or really the one position that really we are giving them a lot of grief about is the running back position because of the fact that we think that Dak Prescott needs help, and he does need help. And why were they not in the market for Derrick Henry, especially that profile of running back, considering that, look, Tony Pollard's no longer in the fold. They had a hammer at one time in Ezekiel Elliott. He's no longer there. So what are you going to do now? Obviously, they're kind of like right now, they're up against it because they're trying to get Dak renegotiated. They know that CD's on the horizon. They know that Mike is on the horizon. So people are going, what are you doing? Do something. You're not doing anything. But I'll tell you this. If they come up in the draft, right, and they draft a guy like, let's just say, Trey Benson out of Florida State. Mm -hmm. Say they wind up getting him, you know, early on in the draft, and you have a 6'2", 6'3", 220-pound running back go. who runs 4'4", who I've seen personally twice, and the kid can absolutely get after it. And he goes for 12, 1300 next year, and the running game isn't a problem. As a matter of fact, it's a there strength that we're going to look back at this and go, man, we were just sitting here, you know, yapping, or at, yapping away at Dallas for no reason. So they still have time to correct it, but I will say this. They better go ahead and make these moves that, that amount to something that's going to help them. Because if yeah, they don't, we're going to come back to these conversations going, hey, man, what were you doing? You said you were all in, but you did nothing. But they still have time, but we're going to be watching close. That's for sure. <laughs> Trey Benson, for those of you who don't know, transferred from Oregon, ran for 1,900 yards, 23 touchdowns for Florida State the last two seasons, and he ran a 4-3-9 at the Combine. So maybe they can replace that with a rookie. But the fact remains, like the world wants to see the Cowboys do something, and they've done nothing. Yeah, they've done nothing, and it's more so not necessarily that the world wants to see it. It's that when listening to Jerry Jones, the world expected it. Dak Prescott is being asked questions about Jerry Jones' mm -hmm. statements. Also, Michael Parsons is saying, if he's all in, I want to see that because mm -hmm. I feel like we haven't done enough in the past off seasons. And now he's sitting at home and he's watching the Saquon Barkleys and the Chauncey Gardner Johnsons go to teams like the Philadelphia Eagles. He's watching Brian Burns make the defense of the New York Giants a better rush team because of his acquisition. He's seen the Washington Commanders make moves like take his old teammate Dante Fowler and make him a part of what they are. Frankie Louvu also defensively. And so he's watching all of these things happen in the NFC East as people get better and the Dallas Cowboys are not. Lewis spoke about the one position we're focusing on because you lose Tony Pollard that was already a bad backfield last year and you miss out on a guy like Derrick Henry. But what about the linebacker position and stopping the run? What about the loss of Dan Quinn and what they did defensively with the roster that was built specifically to do what they needed on third down, do what they needed in sub packages? What about C.D. Lamb when you think about the Green Bay Packer game in the wild card round when C.D. Lamb and yeah. Dak Prescott yep didn't seem to have chemistry who else stepped up outside of them in the past game this isn't a great roster and to do nothing at this point to me is a problem the most disappointing team thus far I think uh, RC pretty much laid it out when he said this is the mistake when we were listening to Jerry Jones <laughs> because even Dak, yeah. like listen yeah. honestly that's it because Dak is like oh I, I don't know what all in means but I'm sure excited to see it. No one has any idea what Jerry's plans are, and so far he's done nothing. And this is a team with, obviously, a lot of aspirations to get to a Super Bowl, mm -hmm. but they haven't actually put the time in, the money and the resources well, in to build I mean, this roster. Yeah, yet. They're, 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 the, the, uh... Okay, we'll leave it right there. So, stay tuned. The cake's not finished baking, okay? I'm going I'm to I'm go, go a little differently here. 
Okay, because Lewis Riddick actually just just turned that frown upside down, and the possibility of Mike Greenberg farting on air definitely um, definitely makes it a little bit better. All right, good people, we'll be uh, here live again starting the league year at 4 p.m., maybe a little sooner than that, um, but we'll definitely be keeping you up to speed with all the news. And if anything breaks with A.J. Dillon, we'll bring it to you. Peace. <laughs>